So, the first two uh, presentations were to do with giving a general introduction to these issues. We are now going to go into specifics, how exactly we can address these sensitivity issues in academic communication. We are going to look at best practices and also worst practices. So, we are going to look at why, what and how. That is, we have discussed a little bit about gender and diversity issues. So, we will start with gender then we will go to other diversity issues, uh, specifically on ethnicity, age and disability. We will start with gender. The kind of exercises that I mentioned earlier on the assignments, those will help us to sensitize ourselves about these issues. So, it does not matter whether we are men and or women, many of us are not aware of the importance of this in communication, how it can affect other people, how it can affect men, women, boys, girls in the classroom. So, first thing is to prepare ourselves and say that yes, the problem exists and I have to address it, it is important. Okay. We try to find out what is the difference between these three. So, this is a book for example about guide to gender aware post disaster needs assessment. So, based on what I told you earlier, can you write down what is the difference between these three, what you think are the difference between these three. Okay, I do not want you to write very long essays, uh, yeah, you have started, can you tell us what uh, uh, is means problem related to gender. Okay. Gender neutral means gender equality. Okay. Equality. Gender awareness means creating awareness among people about okay. gender disparity. Okay. Um, what I want to mention, while, while this is not wrong, this is correct, we are talking about gender sensitive, gender neutral, and gender aware with reference to communication styles. So, how do we understand these three? Yeah. Sir, uh, gender sensitive is uh, the treatment of women mm -hmm. in uh, workplaces. Okay. And uh, gender neutral uh, is considering uh, the equality of women in okay. workplaces and okay. gender awareness related to that, the uh, existence of women and mm. their uh, rights okay. Okay. to be considered okay. in the society. Okay. So, so we can see already that there is so much diversity about how to look at these issues. Can we go back? Yeah. Sir, in my view, gender awareness must come first. Okay. Uh, only when we, when we, only when we are aware, uh -huh. we will be general sensitive and uh, general neutrality, general fairness or uh, okay. equal in my view. Okay. Both correct. This, Same. Uh, can you pass it on here and then we will go there. So, like what, from what I have understood up to the, uh, hmm. the presentation now, g gender sensitive is when none of the genders are uh, underrepresented mm -hmm. and gender neutral is, it means the use of pair pronouns, his, her or a common pronoun there okay. and gender aware is when the correct gender is, you know the correct gender and you use that instead okay. of just vaguely using dear sir like okay. in an application. Okay, yes. okay that is excellent. Could be a person, a female also. Thank you very much. Gender sensitive means using uh, the words which are based on gender or religion. Gender neutral which is a, a way of communicating mm -hmm. a, in unbiased way. Mm -hmm. Gender aware is knowing the consequences of using biased communication. So I want to, uh, I want, I don't want to give any explanation on that. Okay. But I want to have a clarification. Okay. Now you said about in communication we need be gender sensitive, gender neutral and gender awareness. Mm. But I want to know mm. wha how to deal with the transgender. Yeah. So thank you very much. I'll, yeah. So that's the the third gender and transgender is also becoming an important issue now. So uh, thus far, all the uh, um, problems relating to making our language more sensitive has dealt with both dealing with men and women. But this is also an important issue. So as of now, we have very few protocols with dealing with third gender or transgender. Okay, so but there are some solutions. We'll come to that. Also. So as I was saying, all of you are correct in different ways, but I want to talk about this in a very specific way. That is, while communicating uh, scientific knowledge, while communicating our research, while communicating what we have to teach, sensitive or fair 
refers to the fact that we are aware that there are men, women, transgender, third gender and so on and making sure we do not use an exclusive term like mankind or men or he to refer to all of them. Gender neutral is when I think it is not important to focus on the differences. So, there are some cases where we want to ensure that we refer to all of them. There are some cases where it is not important to us whether we are subjects that we are talking about are men or women. You are doing a study of fatigue and tiredness in the workplace, maybe in the aeroplane among men and male and female workers. So, you are interested in fatigue and tiredness, you are not interested in separating out the findings by men and women. So, when you are not interested in those differences, then you look at you use general neutral terms. I okay? will give you examples or when we are talking about third gender, transgender and so on, again in such cases also we either do not want to mention their gender at all or we want to uh, uh, refer to them in terms of their own preferred gender. If you do not know, it is prefer to, preferable to use gender neutral terms, avoid reference to any gender. Gender aware is that is the reason I gave this example here. So, there are some cases where we know that there are differences between men and women which can be physiological, which can be psychological, which can be social and we have to incorporate that into our research. So, I want to set up post disaster relief and recovery mechanisms and if I know that women's needs are different from men, then I need to have different strategies and policies. So, in that case I am gender aware. So, this is an example actually from an IDRC, IDRC is International Development Research Center, it is one of the biggest funding agencies for research in the world and they will insist that your language, your research proposal address these issues otherwise they will not even look at your proposal. So, if for example, you say my technology is going to benefit 300,000 people, they will ask you how many of these are men, how many of are women, how many are children. Because if you are that if you are not sure it indicates you have not done your work properly. You may, you may end up with developing a solution which benefits only men and not women. So, there is a practical impact of this or sometimes we are not interested in gender aware or gender sensitive. So, some people will make this first statement Marie Curie is a great woman scientist, nobody ever says Albert Einstein was a great man scientist is not it. So, this is an example where you are needlessly drawing attention to the gender. If you are doing research among great women scientists, then you can mention the gender. Marie Curie was a great scientist. So, if gender is not important, do not bring it in. So, this is an example of stereotyping that we know most scientists are men, it just happens that Marie Curie is an exception. So, we want to draw attention to our gender, that is how it appears. Okay. So, it is an it is an effect of stereotyping in our own minds. So, the stereotype is something we should avoid in our communication. So, here what it indicates is that most scientists are men, very few scientists are women therefore, it is necessary for me to point out. But most women do many things, not only sci even scientists do many things and most women are not only doing cooking, they are doing a great many things also. So, these kinds of feminized nouns like when we talk about an actor, we are talking about the profession. So, unless you want to bring attention to the gender, you do not have to say actress, just you can just say actor to refer to both men and women or chair women, sports women, business women and so on. No need to point to their gender unless it is necessary. So, when you needlessly bring in the gender, that is an example of stereotyping or these are also examples of stereotyping or further examples here. You know, this, so, this could be sentences when we for example, organize conferences and are sending out so, research scientists often transport will be provided for delegates and there are 30 women I say or 40 women okay, who are also delegates for participants who may have come with their spouses. So, you can there are words available. So, one of the things we want to say is that these kinds of terminologies 
have come into usage not because of lack of alternatives. There are alternatives, but we do not use them because for a long time women were very less present in these kinds of situations, writing these communication uh, messages written oral and so on. Or you know, this, this looks like a very interesting uh, scientific study. Research scientists often neglect their wives and children. So, somebody wrote an article called now even your mom can program. So, there was a lot of outcry against this because it is assumed here that moms are generally stupid. <laughs> and with Arduino you can do it otherwise they cannot do it. You know, even though some of the biggest CEOs of large software companies in the world including Yahoo are women, HP and Compaq and all of them are women. So, there was an outcry against this and subsequently this author gave an apology because there is uh, it indicates a kind of prejudice towards mothers here. That is what we are saying about it. Normally from the name we cannot differentiate yeah. whether it is a lady, yes, or a correct, man correct, or woman. Correct, correct. And when we are writing a letter like for example in uh, India also like Dr. Kamal, Kamal is the name yeah. it, in both the things or in, in foreign countries we never understood whether it is a <laughs> lady or a yeah. So, how we can address it so that, because we need that for yeah. the addressing. Yeah. So, that is why we have given you these options. If you know then you can as one of you mentioned here that if you know you can actually say dear sir or madam. If you do not know you can say dear sir or madam. Okay. So, that is the difference between gender neutral and gender sensitive and gender aware. So, depending on your knowledge you can use one of these options you, or you can just say sir slash madam if you do not know you can use different kind of options. So, and that goes back to what you were just asking one has to become aware when to use them, when not to use them, when to avoid the use of the affix known. So, you can use he or him if you know the gender if you do not know to assume that that person is always a male that is being unfair, that is being stereotypical. So, when you use only he or only she also in some cases for both men and women that is referred to as a sexist pronoun or sexist noun. When we use words like mankind, man, men and so on these are examples of sexist use of language or stereotyping. These are some of the solutions that we can use. We can use pronouns pairs, pronoun pair, he or she, she, he and so on. So, you can also use plural pronouns they for example, uh, I am instructions to a group of participants like you. Okay. So, at the workshop every participant has to submit this evaluation form which is wrong because there are both men and women. I can say every participant has to submit his or her evaluation form. I can always say all participants have to submit their evaluation form. So, avoid mentioning gender altogether that is an example of neutrality whose gender you know then you can specify that I am doing among female pilots among male subjects and so on. Or sometimes you can just replace first person like I or an article. So, at the end of this module each participant should submit a response sheet saying should submit his response sheet or her response sheet or at the end when I am submitting a research proposal to a funding agency at the um, I can say the researcher has submitted his CV along with this proposal or I can avoid gender and say I have appended my CV along with this proposal. Yeah. There are various ways which you can avoid these things altogether these problems. Various kinds of alternatives that are available. There is a UNESCO manual that has been created which we will share with you which gives hundreds of many studies also do now. So, this on the left side you have this common usages which are no longer considered to be acceptable. On the right side you which you can use in your communication, workplace communication, formal, informal communication, uh, written, oral and so on. I will give you examples, published uh, articles where uh, give examples of sensitive and insensitive language. So, here you have 
a sentence from an article that I have taken. Lead acid battery models developed by chemistry experts are not expressed in terms of electrical networks. That would help an electrical engineer to explain, exploit his know-how. So, this article assumes that all electrical engineers are men. So, that is not acceptable. You can use any of those solutions that I gave you earlier. Okay? Instead of referring to electrical engineer as his, you should assume that can be male, female, third gender, transgender. This is another example. Mankind is now able to design materials. So, women in this in IIT Bombay working on men here. So, it just and we do have words like human, humanity, humankind and so on. This one I was telling you earlier about use of language can have serious consequences for the use of our knowledge. Third example here is about effects of ketanserin and haloperidol on pre-pulse inhibition of the acoustic startle eye blink response and in man. Suppose I want to use this research and I want to find out the response and effect on both men and women. Now I am a very busy person, of course a doctor wants to use this, doctors are very busy. They want to find out only from the title whether this applies only to men or to men and women. So, you are yourself losing out on more people reading your study if you do not use sensitive language here. So, if this refers to both men and women, then you mention it because we know the physiology of men and women is not exactly the same, it will be different. So, mention I will say response in human beings, humans. Okay. Again, another example here where exclusive use of masculine nouns is used to refer to both men and women, to all human beings. Again, these are examples of how not to use the language. These are from older articles as you can see. Uh, more, these days, most of these journals have revised their guidelines and they will not accept these titles anymore. So, man-machine interface, um, man survival, yeast and man, you can see. These are all from famous journals. On the other hand, these are from more recent uh, some of them have changed their guidelines earlier, some of them more recently. So, you can see in this article, uh, it says education technology and the professional in Brazil, his or her formation. So, the educational professional like all of us can be both men and women, can be a third gender or you can just say educational technology and professionals in Brazil, their formation, if you want to include third gender and other people also. So, instead of manpower, you can use human resources. Manpower is a term that is to be avoided. Uh, this is an article from the American Journal of Distance Education. One sentence is like this, you see, they have used a pronoun pair, he, she. This is from Social Psychology Quarterly. Reaction to a child's mistakes as affected by his, her looks. That is how we are supposed to say. Or you can see this one. So, this author is very careful in stating that the DNA damage is studied both among men and women. So, somebody who is interested in using this research only in women or only in men can read this. I know exactly what this article is about. It is not vague, it is not ambiguous, it is crystal clear. Uh, mm -hmm. once. once, yes, you can do that also. Yes, sir. You can do that, yes. Once. One should know the, uh, uh, one should know what is one's responsibility yes. rather than saying Correct. his or her. Correct, you can do yes. that. Thank you, sir. So, there are many different solutions. So, that is the beauty of this, that there are actually so many different ways of addressing this problem and yet we continue to make the same mistake. So, there are so many different ways in which you can address these kinds of problems, okay? make the language in fact, clearer. So, you can see it is not simply about avoiding bias, it is also about making the language clear. So, saying, learning um, from media presentations would actually make it whisper also. So, usually some people say there is nothing wrong because this is what we have been doing for centuries, what is wrong with using mankind and so on. So, this is the response to that. Okay? So, the idea is that in communication, we want to feel everybody feel included, not to exclude anybody. 
that is why we are doing this that increases the effectiveness of our communication. So, these are a large number of uh, uh, examples of how to avoid gender nouns and then bring in gender neutral nouns to substitute and you can probably make these lists by yourself and give them to your in uh, you can identify I will just come to you. You can probably identify in your specific subjects that you are teaching what kind of words are commonly used and what kind of substitutes can you find for them and then pass it on to your students to use in their assignments, projects, papers and so on. Yes. Um, in the earlier example, there hmm. was one sentence from the journal, you know. Yeah. And uh, I believe if we can uh, still stick to the older method by writing in passive voices, ah. in that case also we can avoid using okay. uh, he or she. Talk. Yes. Um, if I had time, I would have talked about that. You know, in general, uh, we are supposed to it's avoid to use of passive voice because use of passive voice is more uh, convoluted. It does not make the language clearer. But uh, in the larger presentation which I give here and in other places, uh, we say that in the interests of gender fairness, you can use passive can, voice. Yeah. You can use passive voice and attached. Yeah. So, you avoid mentioning any person. So, instead of saying he, she is, I have attached, you can just say letter has been attached. Yeah. Most of the word processing software you automatically recognizes passive voice and underlines it in red and says, please consider converting it into active voice. So, in general, we are supposed to use passive voice very sparingly. So, but in the interest of being gender fair, you can use sometimes. Sir, see what you are giving now, mm -hmm. substituting the word. Yes. It is a very temporary solution, I think. Mm -hmm. Actual solution is we need to change the mentality of the society. Correct. What we uh, talked about the stereotypes. Correct. That is something what we identify these words. Correct. But actually we know the mentality. Yes. Yeah. That we need to change. Yeah. Then yeah. I think uh, yeah. these words will not make much difference. Yeah. So we, that is completely accepted. What we are saying is, uh, society takes a lot of time to change, those problems we should not import into our communication. So, what can we do is to avoid those stereotypes and biases from coming into our communication while at the same time struggling to uh, remove those stereotypes from society. So, what we are saying is as teachers we have a role. If we can change our communication in the long run people will overcome those stereotypes because earlier generations did not do it, it is taking more time. Whereas, if we can do it in our classrooms, those stereotypes will disappear much faster. Is it right to use active voices or passive voices in technical communication? Active. Active voice. Active is what we are supposed to use most of the time. S some people feel that it is uh, uh, better to use impersonal passive voice to focus on the action rather than the doer of action. What do you feel about this, sir? So, uh, this depends on which discipline you are from. So. Uh, recently, I submitted an article, this was on disasters, where I was asked to use more passive voice. Okay, so, it depends. So, there are certain kinds of publishers who would like you to use more active, certain kinds of publishers, journals who would like you to use passive. So, it is better to find out. So, these days, most associations, bodies, journals also give you guidelines. Better to find out and, and there is also a preferred style that has evolved over a period of time in every subject. Okay, so, and since history is dealing with the past most of the of most often they tend to use more of passive voice. So, it depends. So, one golden rule we want to say here is that there is no standard rule. It is always important to find out what is the preferred style even and that will become more clear in the next presentation. It is always important for us. So, se sensitivity means finding out what is acceptable and then using it not assuming that what you say is correct. Hmm? It's a very some of sometimes in searching for alternative terms, especially for new terms, in searching for words which are gender neutral, gender fair, and so on, you can end up with very awkward terms, like uncrewed aerial vehicle. The American Society of uh, Mechanical Engineers came. It can be very awkward, and generally we say technical like communication must be accurate, but it elegant as far as possible, possible. So, this is not exactly an elegant term, but this one is. Instead of saying unmanned aerial vehicle, you can say robotic aircraft or nowadays you call them drones. Yeah, these are just more examples. Again, I am not going to go into all of them in detail, just to show that there are a lot of alternative terms that can be used to avoid 
these kind of uh, sex systems which are no longer considered to be acceptable which are considered to be stereotypes okay so let's do some exercises so we are saying gender neutral language is dash and free of something inclusive and free of stereotypes and biases okay women are vastly dash in stem jobs and among that's one of the reasons why we are talking about this if they were more better represented some of these communication problems may not have emerged so it's they are under represented terms that specify a particular sex can unnecessarily perpetuate certain stereotypes it's the same term that we use there be aware of the gender specific words you use their meanings and and communication effects what is the effect of on communication of those so this is just examples of how you can design online assessment so there are two things that you have to consider when you design these quizzes one to sensitize the students or participants about the broader issues which are these or you can give um, you know quizzes on actual terms and words which are the correct ones so a combination of both would work well in training students okay i'm calling this home assignment which you can use later but let's see if we can do it here how much do you know about how men and women communicate so there are a lot of psychological studies which talk about differences in communication so non verbal messages carry more weight than verbal messages so i would like to ask only the men in this audience to respond women i'll come to you the men how many of you think this is true uh no no i don't want to go into depending now that is a classic academic response to every call question it depends okay yes or no true or false true okay um how many of you say think it's false only one okay that's good and women how many of you think this is true first sentence okay almost all women non verbal messages carry more weight than verbal messages that is instead of speaking i give a message through an gesture it could be nodding my head it could be shrugging my shoulders it could be through uh, eyes Body expression language. all of those kind of things visual is more powerful in vocal and uh, visual yeah in spite of that most of the men here said true okay so so visual is more than verbal oh sorry visual is more than more uh, more effective than verbal we are saying the number one is 55% number 55% out of 100 ha ha non verbal is 55 okay visual is your on what basis do you say that yeah uh, let me i have referred in the book you refer to the book okay that's very right. good 55% right okay. 38% is your vocal mm -hmm. 55% is visual okay and uh, your uh, um, vowel is okay. your 7% okay now what just came out in this classroom is very interesting and it probably shows that the men here are more sensitive because in general studies show that men are men notice verbal messages more than non verbal ones whereas women notice non verbal messages more than women <laughs> okay so so but here except for one person i'm not saying you are insensitive okay <laughs> in general we find that men will say you never told me this will tell women you never told me this but you know there was a signal that was sent out but they didn't receive it so said uh, non verbal so non verbal I, messages yeah. carry more weightage than verbal messages it mm -hmm. can be true or false yes. it all depends on the situation at which we are talking okay so in a classroom when you are giving a lecture mm -hmm. and if you want a pen mm -hmm. like uh, i'll use non verbal message mm -hmm. 
So it is correct at that particular situation. No, no. We, yeah. in, in general, we yes. agree. The scientific thing to say is that it depends. But <laughs> <laughs> in general, a lot of studies show that women are more cued into receiving non-verbal messages. Men, are, men, for some reason, are more stupid and have to be specifically told things. Otherwise, they will not listen to you. Okay. So, okay. Um, all women do much more than cooking in their daily lives. True? True. Okay. And yet, so that is, you know, one of the stereotypes that we talked about earlier was about housewife versus home. Housewife ignores this particular fact that women do a lot of things. It specifies that women are married to a house. That is their role. Whereas a homemaker recognizes that women do so many things, cooking, cleaning, taking care of children, taking care of elderly people, sick people, shopping and working. Okay? Men also may do all of these things. But we don't refer to men as, uh, you know, in, not, not only house husbands, I'm saying we don't refer to men purely in terms of their work status. That's what we are saying. So, women, men may do that work. But the fact that most men go out of the house to work, that aspect is not captured when we talk about their status. Whereas, in the case of women, when they are doing household work, we refer to them as housewife even though they are doing so many things. So, again it goes back to what I was saying earlier in scientific communication, we have to be accurate. So, homemaker is a more accurate term to refer to what women do. Whereas, a housewife is not only a stereotype, it is a term that does not mean anything actually. Because again it seems to refer to the status of a woman purely in terms of her marital status, which is not always very important for us. Is this true when people, huh? how many people think it is true? Okay, we can see that it's very few and it's mostly women. Yeah, so it's very few and it's mostly women. So that is something that we need to become aware of because some of us feel that terms, using terms like mankind and he are okay to use, that they do refer to both men and women and there is nothing wrong with it. So that is why a lot of experiments have been done and they show that, you know, for example, you ask that there is this experiment uh, of a book title. There was a book about urban man. Okay? It is referred to urban human beings as different from rural people. But when people, children were asked to write, uh, draw a picture, they had pictures where only men were shown, though it was not about men. So, a lot of such experiments have been done. Therefore, these kind of generic words which seem to refer to both men and women should not be used. Yes. One should write uh, homemaker, but even a male uh, can be man can, can be a homemaker. Yes. So in that case, sir. Yeah, anybody. So that's why we are using that term. Okay, okay. It can be men or women. So we all are homemakers. Yes, of course you are. Yeah. Um, this is a kind of assignment which you can design, which you can do yourself, or you can design for other people. And here, we are talking about the workplace communication. So, earlier we were talking mostly about communication with reference to academic research. About the work environment, I have given you certain kinds of terms which are acceptable. Acceptable. Is it possible for some of you to share with us what you deem to be discrimination, which may not be recognized as discrimination by others? Overt discrimination. We all know, no, I don't want to hire a woman, okay? I don't want women to do this work, I won't assign this responsibility to women. Those kind of things we all are aware of. But certain kinds of practices in the work environment with reference to communication, can some of you share, it can be both men and women, share those experiences which you think are not adequately recognized by everybody in the workplace? my college, mm -hmm. um, uh, this group of seniors were sitting and they were trying to decide who will go uh, to IIT Bombay to attend this okay. course. So my prin I got a call from my principal sir, I went to his cabin and then my RC coordinator, he just told me that ma'am you will have to go to IIT Bombay to attend certain workshop. I said that's okay. 
principal sir asked me like, seriously, are you going? I said, yes. How will you manage? I said, sir, I'll manage everything and I'll go there. Yeah. The workshop is for one week. Read all the instructions and then register. I said, yes, sir, I will manage and I'll register. So nobody in that room um, noted these things. But I, as a woman, I feel that these many questions were asked to me only because I am a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody else was OK with yeah. this. Yeah. I'm not saying that it is his fault, because mm -hmm. he totally understands that yeah. I have lot many responsibilities. Responsibility. Yeah. But they will, he will not ask the same question to a male. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Because males are not expected to look after their children, you know, they don't have to worry. Somebody else will do it. Yeah? Maybe the concern, mm -hmm. like, uh, like, okay, because many of the times uh, to assign the work, before assigning work, yeah. um, maybe they, uh, they look into these factors, it's not because they cannot do, mm -hmm. it is maybe the concern like will, uh, whether they will be able to go by mm -hmm. leaving their children, yeah, these are the maybe some issues. So that's, that's the thing. So these concerns also reflect certain kinds of assumptions and stereotypes in our mind. Yeah. So that's, that's so. what we're talking about. And these concerns sometimes can actually look like uh, compliments. So I have a PhD student in our department. Uh, she once mentioned this in the classroom. Uh, she was talking about how all her relatives always tell her she has two grown up children. Okay. And uh, all the letters, oh, you're so great that you're able to manage the PhD. Um, your husband is so busy. And you have two children who are in 10th standard. I have to give this exam. Still, you're able to do it. So she says, you know, nobody ever uh, says such things to men. Okay, why do they? Because by saying this, by paying this compliment, they are identifying her gender and, you know, which she doesn't want. Just accept me as I am. Don't have to compliment me for, you know, uh, being a woman and managing all of these things, that's what women do anyway, all the time. So, these things, that, that, that's exactly the thing that we are trying to say, that these are not necessarily prejudices, these are not necessarily biases, but these unconsciously can cause hurt or offense or can be taken in different ways by people. So, sensitivity means being aware of these things and behaving accordingly, speaking accordingly, that's what it means. Okay? It's not always about bias or insensitivity. It could be the other way around also. So, you know, in, uh, we had some uh, students, a teacher in Bombay University was saying, in the English department, it's the other way around. So there are 15 girls to five boys. And boys actually expressed how they felt discriminated in such circumstances. It could be, it, so it's actually a question of the way in which our society is constituted and our workplaces are constituted. So it's not simply a question of who, uh, certain people being more predisposed to behave in certain ways. In my college, mm -hmm. uh, one of the I, I was uh, I have given the responsibility of uh, selecting one of the faculty members for the forthcoming uh, engineering physics. So we need to send it. So I we have passed the communication to the department H and S, uh, and as a, one of the senior members, like uh, we have identified, and uh, we communicated the same to her. So in turn, she communicated, uh, like she had a talk with her husband. Mm -hmm. And her husband said, no, you can, like if you want to go, like uh, if any one of the persons from your college is going to associate with you, then uh, okay. I can make you to go. So then she expressed this view. Mm -hmm. And somehow, uh, like somebody, some, someone else has been selected okay. for that. So yeah. I think uh, this, my point may be relevant to this yes, question. Yes. So, so what we want is for you to reflect on these kinds of things and see how you know, the workplace environment and communication can be made better to avoid these kinds of situations. Uh, can I just ask you how many, in how many of your institutions the number of uh, male and female students is roughly the same? Okay. And in how many are the female students more than the number of boys? Few. Okay. And the majority is? In my CSE branch, okay. out of 60, 40 meters are girls. Girls, okay. And the boys. <laughs> yeah. But you can see that the majority are, is the other way around. Okay.